a very good morning to you my dear sisters and brothers and welcome to Carmelite a reflection on the day's readings let us now begin our reflection invoking the name of the trinity in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen dear friends today is the 3rd of december and it's a sunday the first sunday of advent for our reflection we have the gospel passage taken from mark chapter 13 verses 33 to 37 let us then meditatively and reflectively listen to the gospel passage a reading from the holy gospel according to mark chapter 13 verses 33 to 37 at that time jesus said to his disciples be on guard keep awake for you do not know when the time will come it is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake therefore stay awake for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening or at midnight or when the cock crows or in the morning lest he come suddenly and find you asleep and what i say to you i say to all stay awake The gospel of the Lord praise to you Lord Jesus Christ Dear friends with the celebration of the first Sunday of Advent we are beginning a new liturgical year Advent as we know is a season of grace a time offered by the church for the preparation of the birth of the lord in our hearts during the four weeks of advent we contemplate the first coming of jesus as our savior and also anticipate his promised second coming and amid the flurry of christmas preparations we look for practical ways to observe the holiness of the season in our everyday lives we are called to reflect not much on how he was born but rather to understand and realize the purpose why he was born now there is a story told of the frog and the scorpion but the scorpion met a frog on the bank of the stream and gently asked the frog to carry him across the river on its back now the frog is suspicious and questions how do i know that you wouldn't sting me the scorpion replies am i so stupid because if i do so not only you but we both will drown and die now the frog is satisfied and convinced with the answer and they both set out but in mid stream the scorpion stings the frog the frog feels the onset of paralysis and starts gradually to sink knowing they both will drown but the frog has just enough time to gasp and ask my friend why did you sting me to which the scorpion coolly replies well i am helpless it's my nature to sting and friends what is god's nature we all know it his nature is to forgive and to save the brothers and sisters advent is also a time of hope it's a time to bring to expression all that we hope for and is also a time for telling the truth truth about our weariness and our anxieties 
and also about God's relentless love for the whole world. Today's gospel pulls back the curtain on false hopes and realities in life in order to reveal God's commitment to enter into a re and redeem our lives and the world. Jesus wants to reassure his disciples that despite the difficulty of their current circumstances, justice is coming. The disciples' job is to be vigilant and be on watch for God even when they feel helpless because God is at work in the world. He is engaged in restoring peace and harmony in the world, a masterpiece of his passionate love. Well, it makes me wonder if we might have this Advent a unique opportunity to keep watch for God. Not because we have anything else on our to-do lists, but because we desperately need to experience connection in the midst of isolation, to see the glimmers of light in the darkness, tendrils of hope in all that wearies us, signs of peace in all, that, all the chaos of life, gestures of love in all that divides and glimpses of joy in the many sorrows. An Advent invites us to be attentive to such glimmers and tendrils and signs and gestures. Advent invites us to keep watch for God, looking for Christ in the people we cross paths with and people we interact with, in all that we do and all the spaces we connect so that we might not just focus our attention in Advent on what is ahead of us, like our celebrations of the birth of Christ and our hopes about the return of Christ, but rather with hope-filled eyes join in a present tense Advent, meaning to say an Advent focused on being awake to God's redeeming work in the world here and now. A present tense Advent that not only expects God's arrival but assumes God's ongoing presence in the here and now. In the midst of all of our preparations and our uncertainties, we are reminded to keep watch for God so that we might recognize Jesus being born into a world which is in great need of healing and of hope. My dear brothers and sisters, we believe that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It is true that Jesus affirmed, I have come that they may have life and life in abundance. It is also true that unto a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting and the Prince of Peace. Furthermore, Jesus himself claims that all authority in heaven and on earth is given to him and that he is with us until the end of the world. So, let us enter Advent with full hope, even if it, is sometimes, if it sometimes means for us hope against hope. Let us try and see visions of love and peace and justice. Let us affirm with humility, with joy, with faith and with courage that Jesus Christ is the life of the world. In these Advent days, let us be courageous and remember that the power of God is already at work in the world, especially in the midst of pandemics. Confusions, difficulties of life, sickness and all the turmoil that we experience. God's power is also at work in our struggles for justice, peace and love in our families and places of work, in our human frailties and weaknesses. The power of God is present here and now and our task is to place our hope in that mighty power. To keep watch, to be present, to pay attention and to prepare places where God is being born into our world, our hearts. Dear friends, the Gospel text comes to our aid in preparing ourselves for the coming of Christ. Jesus is like a householder who has gone abroad. He has left his servants, that is, you and me, in charge of his affairs, 
each one with their own task. What is my task? What is my role in this world? Stay awake because you do not know when the master will come. Stay awake. Now, how do we do that? Very simple. We keep in touch with those around us by each day doing our best to live lives of love, of compassion, of forgiveness, of honesty and integrity. We keep in touch with our God through lives of prayer. And the simplest and deepest prayer is to be aware of the active presence of God permeating every single moment of every single day. Jesus is speaking of his second coming at the end of time. But each of us before that can eagerly look forward to his coming by being well prepared. It means that we must so live that it does not matter when he comes. Our life becomes a preparation for the vision of happiness and for experience of pure love. Five times in this short passage, Jesus tells us to be attentive. We would rather settle down to, be, to a comfortable life. But the world of God is breaking in everywhere like an invasion. We need to ask for the grace to seek God in all things. As St. Ignatius says, a new world order began with Jesus and we have a part to play in it. Every day we revive how things and events went on and they will certainly help us to improve the quality of our life and relationships. What Advent is encouraging us is that we must live now with faith. We must live now with love. And what drives us on, the, on to live with faith and to share this love is our hope. And this is what it means to prepare for Christmas, to help each other as we go through these difficult times, but with hope and in our hope in our hearts. A hope that feeds the deep faith that we must recommit ourselves to our friends and to people and to the world in which God is alive and active. And also that we commit ourselves to reaching out to love, caring and compassion, and most of all, with a joyful heart. Advent, furthermore, reminds us that our mind is a ventilator. Our heart is a window, ourself a door. It's time now to open our minds to fresh ideas, our hearts to more people, and our lives for deeper commitment to the one who comes. Sadly, we busy ourselves with shopping for Christmas. What about shopping for Christ? Dear friends, the season of Advent is a holy time for us for contemplating the salvation given to us. This season encourages us not to try the best deals when it comes to our Christmas shopping or to go to extreme lengths to make our Christmas very special. The season of Advent reminds us of the past when Jesus was born for the purpose of our salvation. It reminds us of Jesus' presence in our lives today and it reminds us to look forward to when Jesus will come again at the end of the world. During her time on earth, St. Teresa of Calcutta said, Yesterday is gone, tomorrow has not yet come. We have only today. Let us begin. So dear friends, we have to be courageous enough to ask God our questions, to be humble enough to be open to God's reply and to be patient enough to wait for God's plan to, of salvation available to each one of us and do our best in realizing this plan of salvation. May this Advent, dear brothers and sisters, be for us a time of spiritual awakening and renewal as we prepare to celebrate the birth of the Savior of the world. Let us end our reflection with a short prayer. Lord, you are Emmanuel, God with us. Remain with us forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the psalmist praying for the people invokes God to come to save the people. There is an expectation that God will finish the work that God began in establishing a bond with the chosen people. The final phrase of today's excerpt promises the people's allegiance to God 
as God renews the covenant with the people. Let's pray that psalm now. Your response, O God, bring us back. Let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. O God, bring us back. Let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hear us. Enthroned on the cherubim, shine forth, rouse up your might, and come to save us. O God, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. God of hosts, turn again, we implore. Look down from heaven and see. Visit this vine and protect it, the vine your right hand has planted, the Son of Man you have claimed for yourself. O God, bring us back. Let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. May your hand be on the man at your right hand, the Son of Man you have confirmed as your own, and we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. O God, bring us back. Let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. Brothers and sisters, pray for God's blessing now. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brother and sister, we thank Reverend Father Ratan Almeida for sharing his reflection with us today. And today we begin a new liturgical year. And in this liturgical year, the readings will be taken from year B or second cycle. And we remember today all those who are celebrating their birthdays, especially Sister Maria Severina Carmelite, Jacinta Rodriguez from Kuwait, Lucy de Souza from Mira Road, Mumbai. Francis De Costa from Badyar Beltangadi, Francis Matthias from Manipal, Pradeep De Souza from Karkala Udupi, Ronald Rodriguez from Belvai Mangalore. Wish you all a happy birthday. God bless you. And we pray for the departed soul of Alex John Kulasu from Huspet Mudbidri and Roshan Manoj Mendonsa from Mudrangadi. May the Lord grant them eternal rest. That's all for today, my dear friends. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.